All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna get very technical, I must warn you, so brace yourself. We're gonna be talking about all sorts of teleconnections like the AO, the NAO, and the PNA. And we're gonna talk about how that's actually gonna give us a huge pattern switch, almost a complete flip in the pattern, I'd call it. Now, before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you want July to be different than June was? And if so, let me know in the comments how you want it to be different, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now let's get into this video, and we're taking a look first off at our Arctic Oscillation, and this is from our European Ensemble model, and as you can see, that black line with the zero at the very, very left side of it uh, basically is the neutral area, and you, as you can see, it's going to kind of teeter right on that neutral area. So this one is going to be kind of a non-factor all the way until we get to about J July 3rd at least. It's going to go a little bit positive towards the end of June. It's not really going to make a huge difference though because it doesn't go very positive whatsoever. Uh, and let's look at what the GFS Ensemble has to say about that. And basically the same thing. This one does have it going a little bit more positive there. Uh, so we'll have to see if that could be a factor here on the GFS Ensemble model. We are going to take a look at the map and I'm going to show you with the same time frame uh, where like what's going on and seeing how it's changing. But as you can see, it starts to go positive around maybe the 24th and it's fully positive by about the 27th and it stays that way all the way till the end of the model run. All right, now we're about to move on and what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a map where I can show you what that AO is actually going to do on a map. So this is why it's going to be very educational because we're not only going to look at the graph, I'm actually going to show you on a map what's changing with this. By the way, if you guys like videos like this, make sure to let me know in the comments down below because I've never really made a video this in depth, but if you guys do enjoy it, I can do it more often. I'm just afraid that a lot of people will be turned off by it, obviously, because they just, it's too much. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Now, here we're looking at our 500 millibar geopotential height, and basically what you need to know is usually colder temperatures are associated with those blue areas and warmer temperatures are associated with that uh, y those more orange and red shades. Also, higher pressure is associated with those red areas and lower pressure is associated with the bluer areas. That's all you need to know. Uh, and we're mostly wanting to pay attention to that Arctic Circle. So basically, northern Canada, northern Alaska, uh, and then areas in Greenland there in Russia as well, and over all of the water there as well. And as you can see, we're seeing mostly blues, uh, but really there's some oranges too, and that's the indication that we have a very neutral AO pattern. Now, if we were in a positive AO, what we'd be taking a look at would be mostly those blues over the Arctic regions. It would be much colder than what is typical over the Arctic regions. And if we had a negative AO, we would see a lot more of those oranges over the Arctic regions, like undeniable amount. There's no blues, only oranges. And if we were in a positive AO, we would be seeing only blues, no reds. I hope that makes sense. So we're seeing both which means we're pretty much stuck in a neutral pattern. There is a time frame of at about June 22nd where it looks about the most negative I've seen it on this entire model run. Uh, as you can see, there's reds kind of connecting there over Greenland, but there's still some blue, so we're very close to neutral here still. Uh, let's go ahead and move it to about July 4th, and as you can see, mostly blues show up. So we start to get kind of in a positive AO pattern as well. Uh, so it's going to be all over the place, but mostly it's going to be neutral there. So we're about to move on, and what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our NAO, our North Atlantic Oscillation, see if there's anything going on there. And then at the very end, we're going to go over our Pacific North American Oscillation, our PNA. All right, and here we are taking a look at that NAO on our... E, uh, ECMWF ensemble model here, which again is our European ensemble model. And again, this one also wants to stay pretty neutral, just kind of hovering right around that black line. This one's even more neutral than the AO. Uh, it's a little less of a factor than the AO, but this is a very important one, specifically during the winter time. This one plays a huge role in a lot of separate things. Let's go ahead and see what the GFS ensemble ha model has to say. And you see, it keeps it a little more positive, a little bit further away th from that black line than the European ensemble model did. But really, not a lot to say here. It's really just staying pretty neutral. And as we look at the map here, it's going to be pretty well clear that we're taking a look at a neutral NAO pattern. 
In a negative NAO, what we'd want to be taking a look at is mostly reds there just offshore of Greenland to the south of Greenland and over Greenland would be very favorable as well. And really just taking up all of that area off the east coast of Canada, or I guess the northeast coast of Canada, because you really want uh, some of those negative anomalies there further south than the red ones. And right now we're kind of seeing a neutral, but I would say mostly a positive NAO here, which would usually encourage uh, warmer than normal conditions over the eastern United States. Right now, it's not doing so because, well, first off, we have a neutral AO, and second off, we're going to talk about our PNA, but that's the one that's really driving this pattern right now. So, what we're going to do is we are about to move on, and we are about to talk about that PNA, which is going to be a huge factor, and it is not going to stay neutral. It's actually going to do a complete flip, and that's what our pattern switch is going to be caused by. All right, so here we are taking a look at the graph for our PNA. Again, Pacific North American Oscillation. And as you can see, we are a bit positive right now, almost uh, there at the two line there. So we're pretty far positive. This one can go um, pretty far positive at times. This one fluctuates a little more than the AO and the NAO, in my opinion. I see this one fluctuate a lot. Uh, and it does really drive the pattern. So in a positive PNA pattern, what we're looking at is warmer than normal conditions over the western United States. So it causes the warm air to go to the western United States, which means there's no warm air left over for the eastern United States a lot of the time. And that's the case for what the pattern we're in. It's been quite chilly uh, for summertime, and that's mostly because we've been stuck in this positive PNA pattern. And you want a positive PNA pattern in the wintertime for colder than normal conditions and snowy conditions in the eastern United States. We didn't get that this year, but we've had it since April, May, June. We've had this positive PNA pattern. Uh, but in a negative PNA pattern, what happens, and as you can see, around June 26th, if you look at the bottom of the screen there, we see that shoot negative. And what happens is it shoots negative and it stays negative until about about at least the beginning of July. And what we see in a negative PNA is below average temperatures in the western United States. And what that causes to happen is the warmer than normal conditions usually go to the eastern United States when they're not in the western United States. Because usually we're cut in half. Usually one or the other, western or eastern United States, is seeing warmer than normal conditions and the other seeing colder than normal conditions. So that's why the PNA really drives the pattern because it dictates whether the western United States is having warmer or colder than normal conditions. So we see that go negative at, at about the 26th. Let's go ahead and take a look at the GFS Ensemble model. Same exact thing, so we're not even really going to talk about it. Here is by June 22nd, as you can see, positive PNA. Look at those oranges there for the west coast of the United States and the west coast of Canada. And look, it's causing those blue areas to reach into the middle portions of the United States and possibly even the eastern United States. But as we're at the 26th, we start to see those anomalies move further east a little bit. They're not just on the west coast, they're moving further east. And then take a look at June 28th. We start to see those reds move out of the western United States, and we see some blues there for western Canada and northwestern United States. And then by the time we're at about June 30th, you can see we fully enter a negative PNA pattern. And look at that, some reds show up for the central and eastern United States. So like I said, a complete pattern flip here. And then look at that. By the time we're at July 2nd, you can see those reds are widespread throughout the central and northeastern United States. Now, one thing I must mention is I have seen them trending at the southeast, still staying below average temperatures. Uh, and again, a lot of people want this because I've had a lot of people from the deep south saying, why do you want warmer than normal conditions? We want colder than normal conditions uh, because it just gets so darn hot there. And I'm glad that you guys are going to be hopefully staying a little bit negative in those temperatures. All right, now what we're going to do is we're about to move on and we're going to take a look at the temperature anomalies, actually. So we're going to see the effects of this pattern switch real quick for the last few minutes of this video. We're going to take a look at the five-day increments on our GFS Ensemble model. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed being able to see the pattern switch in, I guess, on a map and me describe it. Let me know if that was confusing. I can answer any questions. Uh, I usually just show the graph for the PNA and I'm like, positive means this, negative means this, and basically that's going to happen. But I wanted in this video to really dive into the, the map and just show you guys as it's happening. I showed you the graph and then the map and showed you the effects that will take place. So hopefully it was very clear in transition uh, and you guys were able to 
pick up on uh, the actual effects. And hopefully I wasn't too confusing. I know it can be confusing sometimes and I apologize for that. Anyway, here's the 22nd through the 27th, which again is when we're in that positive PNA pattern. And look at that, warmer than normal conditions for the western United States, the extreme western United States, mostly along the western coast there. And then we see overall colder than normal conditions there for the central and in through a lot of the eastern United States, with the exception of the immediate east coast and maybe New England as well. And then here's the 29th through the 4th of July. And as you can see, uh, the warmer than normal conditions kind of dissipate for the western United States. There's still warmer than normal conditions around, uh, but we see that mostly turn into just yellows as opposed to reds. And we do see a little bit of blues there for the Pacific Northwest and portions of California as well. And then there for the South Central United States and some of the Southeast, we see neutral to below average temperatures. Like I stated before, again, we're going to kind of be in that pattern. Uh, but the northeastern United States, the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, and the upper Midwest look to turn into positive temperatures, uh, which is going to be a pretty big switch up from what we've been having. So I hope you guys are excited for that. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think we will have another tropical storm for the month of June? And Matthew Sones, or Sones said, if we do see one, it'll be later in June due to the African dust in the upper atmosphere. If I had to take a wild guess, I will say from June 29th, we will see one form and I think that that's really the time frame that I'm eyeballing if you guys watched yesterday's video there is going to be a favorable period for tropical development but there is going to be this very dry air that moves in uh, but towards the end of June like 29th like Matthew said or maybe the very first week of July it does appear that that dry air will move out for a period so there might be a sweet spot right in there that a tropical storm could develop and we will really have to watch that closely if it does occur of course I will be here to track it with you guys and I would love to have you guys here for that. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.